It's uh, good to have you with us, Steve. What about Thank these you. initial jobless claims increasing by 19,000 the most mm -hmm. since April and exceeding even the highest estimate of economists that we surveyed? What does this mean for the U.S. jobs market? It's still not looking pretty, is it? It's still not looking pretty. And actually, uh, if I can kind of uh, extend the comments of your, your previous guest, uh, I, I think that might be a little optimistic to recover half the jobs lost in the next year. Uh, what you're seeing is stabilization in the job market, uh, but not a whole lot more than that. So stabilization is probably a reasonable scenario. I don't know if it's optimistic or pessimistic, but it seems uh, reasonable. So uh, the, the good news is that, that corporations have been able to maintain tremendous profitability, uh, but a big chunk of this you know, uh, absolutely wonderful corporate earnings story is you know, the, the unemployment picture. So it's been mostly cost out in the labor market. So I think uh, you're probably looking at stabilization o over the next uh, couple quarters. Okay, well, let's talk about those on-farm payrolls, those all-important jobs numbers that uh, we'll get in the U.S. later on. You know, the consensus is calling for a drop in payrolls of 65,000. Uh, what mm -hmm. are you looking for? Can we actually exceed that? Uh, by our estimates, I don't think we're going to exceed it by a month. You know, th there's the total number which is going to include a lot of volatility of government workers, mostly the people that are knocking on doors, taking census surveys uh, for the federal government right now. So that's going to create a lot of volatility. Our number is about negative 62,000, which is pretty in, in line with the number that you're quoting there. Uh, but I think the one that you really want to look at is the private payrolls. How many jobs are there uh, being produced in the private sector? So for that, you're probably looking about plus 90,000. So. But the aggregate number, when you strip out all the jobs that are being lost at the federal level, you're probably going to be about negative 62 in our opinion. Okay. Okay. Well, let me ask you this, Steve. I mean, you still think equities look attractive compared to fixed income. What makes you think so when we're still looking at uh, such a weak job market with the unemployment rate ticking higher possibly in the U.S.? Now, that is also a global perspective as well. So globally, we, we like equities. Uh, also, you're looking at fixed income, especially on the Treasury uh, yield curve. Safe haven on the short end of the curve is very, very expensive. Uh, yields there are very, very low. So right now, proactively looking at you know, extremely expensive assets is not something we would recommend. Uh, also, if you're looking at equities, a low interest rate environment, uh, I think you're uh, going to be able to uh, expand multiples uh, going forward. And then also, I think the uh, earnings uh, picture, as I mentioned earlier, is, is very, very strong. Uh, corporations mm -hmm. in America at least are sitting on a mountain of cash uh, and they will begin to deploy that either in shareholder value or expanding their businesses. So we don't think it's going to be a gangbusters year, uh, but we do think that, you know, scratching and clawing your way to a normalized rate of return in equities, you know, longer term uh, investors are going to need that return, so they need to look into risk assets uh, right now. Okay, Steve, quickly, let's take a look at the sectors that you're looking at, consumer discretionary, technology, materials. What I find interesting is financials is amongst this group, considering the news we're mm -hmm. getting from Fannie Mae, still needing billions more in bailouts. True. Yeah, yeah, Fannie's, this is going to be an ongoing problem. This is, you know, 40 years in the making. Uh, it's a credit bubble that's been uh, most notably presented in the housing market. Uh, Congress is going to at least ask some questions. I don't know that they'll address it uh, next year. Uh, but if you look at uh, outside of Fannie and Freddie, which are not going to look pretty, uh, you're looking at, you know, the premier flagship large money center banks are, are doing reasonably well. Uh, they've cleaned up a lot of their balance sheets. A lot of those toxic assets have been moved off. And now, m m perhaps more than anything, we know what the financial regulatory system is going to look like. So we can kind of handicap winners and losers in magnitude. So I think within financials, that is a very name-specific uh, perspective, but you're getting some, you know, very good earnings and great franchises for reasonable multiples. So, you know, proceed okay. with caution, but there's some opportunities there. Steve, enjoy your weekend.